Hello and welcome to this edition of the podium, which is coming to you live from the CRM Broadcasting Corporation with me, Asmiba. We start with a course of the day, with, which comes from APJ Abdul Kalam, an Indian statesman, says, If a country is to be corruption free and become a nation of beautiful minds, I strongly feel that there are three key social members who can make a difference. They are the father, the mother, and the teacher. In this edition of the program, today is World Autism Day. What are some of the reasons um, for this disease? We shall find out. Anti-Corruption Commission apprehend over eight traffic police officers for corruption-related offenses. Mjala University Alumni Association on Resource Mobilization to Rehabilitate a Recently Bought Down Building on Mokonde Campus. And the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources launches the closed season project. How is it going to affect uh, the market? We shall find out all these and more, including your messages which you can send to 83 Zero eight eight three seven three five zero four. So you can send us a message to our Facebook page, SLBC TV Channel Thirty One. It's podium. The number you can send your message to 0833735 The Njala University Alumni Association is on a resource mobilization to raise funds for the rehabilitation of the recently burnt down building that housed a few departments at Mokonde campus. Where the structure got burned down some one month back as a result of, uh, well, many people have given different reasons for the cause of the fire. We don't know the exact reason for the cause of the fire. But in the studio today we have Dr. Richard Conte. He is the President of the Njala University Alumni Association. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Asmi. Okay. Um, do you know, I mean, the association, do you know exactly the reasons for last month's fire incidents? Yes. Uh, when the incident happened on the 16th of um, March, the administration immediately took steps uh, to go and assess the situation. Even the Honorable Minister himself and his deputy had a number of other officials from government were there on Sunday morning to assess the situation and for us also as an alumni association we also dispatched the team to go and do our own independent assessment. The team was led by Mr. Gilbert Cooper and uh, other members of the team included Dr. Patrick Komawa and um, Professor Joe Bermagui. The whole essence was for us to be able to see how we can work with the administration <clears throat> to first of all identify the root causes of the problem and then see what we can do to be able to raise funds to be able to quickly address the situation. The report by the fire department, uh, uh, National Fire Force, revealed that the, uh, the incident was caused by they said, split cables. Mm. I think uh, so the phase and the neutral touched and so it's packed. And, um, and I'm sure when that happened, uh, it caused the fire. And then they are saying that, that the cables were split because rodents must have eaten into the cables and exposed the cable. And possibly due to uh, lack of maintenance over time, it causes... Is it one of the new buildings? It is not one of the new buildings, but one of the buildings that were there and uh, it's one of the better buildings. Mm -hmm. And this building housed the Human Kinetics Department, the Teacher Education Department, the language department and the math and science department. It also uh, housed a number of offices and lecture rooms. And that was a big loss. So how can you describe the destruction of the fire? How can you describe that loss? It's, it's a very serious loss, especially when you consider the fact that the infrastructure on the both campuses in itself not adequate. And so if one of the better facilities there also gets burnt, it's a big loss and it's even an emergency for us. That is why as alumni we think it's our responsibility to step in immediately and try to mobilize resources, working with government, working with the administration to be able to quickly rehabilitate that building. Is this something that the alumni can shoulder? Yes, we believe the alumni can shoulder it. We believe that uh, alumni of Jala are in very good positions, even in country. They are occupying very senior positions out of this country. And if there is the will to do it, we can. We are also calling on other 
people to help. We have written letters out to even His Excellency the President, we have written to all ministers and deputy ministers, we have written to all banks, we written to all insurance companies, we have written to all uh, mining companies in the country, asking them to chip in and help. Well, what is more worrisome is not just about the building that got burnt, but we also observe that a number of electrical items we are born, chairs we are destroyed, desks we are destroyed, office for equipment we are destroyed, computers, laptops, fans, refrigerators, projectors, stabilizers, etc. etc. And these things need to be replaced because the lecturers cannot perform their duties without uh, these equipments. And so it's an emergency for us. They are now using a makeshift facility in the building, but that is not sustainable. So how much so does the alumni need to undertake this huge financial project? The alumni sent in a team from the Ministry of Works, the engineers from the Ministry of Works. They did the assessment and arrived at a figure of about 750 million leons to do the rehabilitation and replace the items that have been uh, destroyed. And uh, that is the money we hope we are going to raise. And as alumni, we have launched our own internal fundraising and we have now raised over 50 million uh, uh, towards that and counting. And we are calling on other alumni who have not yet contributed to please do so. We have to lead by example. And if we as alumni really have the association at heart and we have our institution, our alma mater at heart, it's a time for us to come forward and make our own contribution so that we can all help make What Jala about the administration the itself? I mean, the Njala University administration, they themselves need to come in. So one watching you may ask, um, has the administration done anything or have they expressed any interest to do anything? Yes, yes, yes. They, they, in fact, I must commend the administration for the way in which they responded. From the very night the incident happened, they were getting on top of the matter, and we are working closely. This appeal we are making is done jointly with the university, it is with the full support of the university, and we ask that they allow us to provide leadership in this so that we can also help them, knowing fully well that they are involved in a range of other issues. We think that all over the world, alumni associations play a very critical role in helping build the infrastructure and other related issues for their universities. And we think at JALA, we also have to play our part. Okay. But continue to be with us. Uh, he is uh, Dr. Richard Conte. He is the president of the Njala University Alumni Association. It's Podium coming to you from Twitter. Well, let's now go to something that has been with sport. Well, leaders of the CLU Premier League FC Calon um, had a 2 0 defeat to their close contenders, the Eastern Lions Football Club. But the match was marred by overcrowding, which led to the delay of the commencement of, of the match, and some supporters entered into the field. And uh, well, this situation was later put under control by security personnel. Well, many spectators say uh, the stadium has hardly been filled beyond what's happened that particular day. Well, in history, my sports uh, colleague, my sports producer, uh, and presenter Esther Marie Samuel. Esther, welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, the stadium went beyond its capacity. A stadium that supposedly should accommodate little over 30,000 or so. Um, many people said close to 40,000 or so people. Over 60,000 people. Over 60, yeah. So you can even, so twice the population that the stadium should accommodate enter into the stadium that day. Yeah, interested in that match, um, many people consider it as the El Clasico of Silence football. And in relation to that, the leaders FC Calon, we are up against um, the second in that particular table, that is East Lions, that we are playing with 20 points. So what happened was that the Secretary General of the of East FC Calon and the executive, they thought it fit that they should increase the price as to control the cultural but that never actualized because before 3 p.m. the stadium was very much jam packed and they were still selling tickets and that resulted to the delay that match. That match should have commenced at 6.30. But what happened was that one of the players of um, Easter Lions, though he was not guest, Johnny Cocker, he had an attack, so he was he was lost by the ambulance team from the Red Cross Society. And during that process, some of the supporters that were under the basement entered um, the stadium in the arena. So because of that, the match was unable to continue to, to, to start. 
because that match should have commenced at 6 30 but due to the the supporter when they invaded the pitch so and in standard football there is no the pitch way not be invaded. exactly because the players the officials everybody in that basement in the field should be protected and since supporters on the pitch was totally uncalled for. So what the board did and the Minister of Sports, Ibrahim Yelenke, was to see how best they could bring on board more security personnel to put the situation under control. So, and the Vice President was there and he took the kickoff. And during that process, he was not allowed to go in the pitch because of the crowd trouble. But around five minutes to eight, the personnel from Alslav they were able to put the situation under control. And the, the, the game resumed? Definitely so. I mean, what, so what does that mean for the Premier League itself? Because before the commencement of this league, what the board did was to ensure they engage all of the club owners and the executive members of the 13 Premier Leagues that are currently taking part in this competition. And from the agreement and the communicate signed was that the host team they should provide adequate security for the for a game. That is why even when we saw a referee that was beaten up and attacked in in Bow during the match between Freetown City FC and that of Bow Rangers, what the board did was to find um, the Bow and Bow Rangers and as well as Diamond Stars for failing to provide adequate security. But so that was an agreement. Do you think that itself? I'm not defending the clubs, but do you think that itself is fair? Because Say for instance, that match at the National Stadium, um, FC Calon and Eastern Lions, asking the host team to provide security for close to 60,000 people. Well, that was the agreement because what the board did, they as board, they've already provided for the referees and other people that are officiating in that match, and the onus of security was vested with the host team. So, by regulation and by the agreement that is signed before the commencement of the league, is that FC Calon, they were the host. On Sunday's encounter, and remember, the stadium hosts about 35,000 capacity. What they should have done is to ensure that they get at least that 35,000 tickets. And when it finishes, they should not in any way sell more tickets. But that was never forthcoming. We saw thousands of people, and people paid their money, and some of them were not even um, able to watch the match because of the overcrowding. And when you look at the the um, presidential stand. It was duly meant for people that are having accreditation or when you pay your 100,000. But that very day, people paid their money, but they were unable to even go up to the presidential stand due to this overcrowding. So moving forward, I think um, the host club, they should have known by this time the stadium capacity and how they go about in providing adequate security for the people. because. Many people thought that match should have not been played due to the crowd trouble because the, the people were not secured and even the officials and players, they failed to come and do their losing up because they were afraid of the crowd trouble, yes, but... No, okay, let's, 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 now, let, let, let's talk, uh, now let us talk um, sports proper, I mean, what's the position of, of FC Cologne and Easter Lions in the competition? That makes that match very much intensified because when you look at the table, FC Calon, before that day, they were having 23 points and leading East Lions by 3 points. So when it ended 2 0 in favor of East Lions, yes, they, they are now having time, but um, FC Calon are ahead of them about 3 goals ahead of East uh, Lions. Yes, so for now, FC Calon are still leading the table with 23 points. But remember, um, East Lions, they they have one match at hand. Mm -hmm. They will play against Paul Authority on the 10th of April, and that one will be a decisive one. Whether it will be, yes, mm -hmm. at the Siaka Stadium, Stadium on the 10th of April. So that match is a decisive one for East Lions, whether they will come from the second position and then occupy the first position. So it's going to be a tough encounter for them because they will be playing against Paul Authority. Remember, Paul Authority in many of the matches, they've not been getting the results that they've been looking for. To. So that one on the tenth is going to be a decisive one whether they are going to be the leader of the table. What about sport. FC Calon maintaining that first position? How, how, how crucial is, is, is their position now? Well, it all depends what, on what the outcome. What chances do they have to maintain that or to come down? It all depends on the outcome of the pending match okay. that East Alliance will be playing on the tenth. Because FC Calon, they've already played all of their matches mm -hmm. and 
Easter Lions are having one game at hand. That game should have played on Thursday, but due to the match that they had on Sunday, so it was postponed. So the match on the 10th of April is going to be a decisive one. Either way, whether they have, they have a draw or a win, they automatically um, Easter Lions will be um, well, out what, what, being the lead. What, what about both authority if they happen to? To win the match, what position are they going to be placed? Well, for now, Port Authority they've not been they, 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 they do have three games to play. On um, they are they are now having uh, they are eight on the table now, and they have three remaining matches. On um, Wednesday, tomorrow they will be up against um Edwards, all Edwardian football team, and um they will be playing against Central Parade on Sunday, and then on the tenth, so it's going to be against um Easter Lion. So if they are going to win all of those matches then there is tendency that they will come up to the the second position. But for now the competition is amongst the likes of the um the FC Calon, the Easter Lions and probably um Central Pied. Wow. They are also opting for the top two in this first round of the competition. So highly likely maybe this cup is going to remain in free time. Well, this is the first round. I am, a, I, I am an Eastern Lion fan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Eastern Lions, they are the money spenders. They've been doing tremendously well in fact. Money spenders alone? Yes, mm. and they, they do have the materials. When you look at them, after the match, Gento, their vice chairman, Mohamed Gento, gave the team $5,000 because of the one day match and gave the officials $2,000 also as a motivation for the players and officials to keep giving them the results that they want. On Saturday, we saw them officially unveiling their 75 seater bus for the team. So, all of those things are. Are motivating our players. Yes, I saw I saw Dr. Richard Conte and Nolino. I don't know what team <laughs> <laughs> you support. You are a fan of which of the teams? Yes, that's. My team is not in, in the Premiership. In the so Premiership. I, I, I support the <laughs> <with> Zoom <some> stars. <laughs> 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 the program is Podium coming to you from Frital, where that's uh, Esther Mike somewhere. Uh, be with us, uh, we shall ask you a few more questions later in four hours. Let's now go to another issue. Every year on the 2nd of April, uh, World Autism Day is recognized to encourage member states of the United Nations uh, to take measures to raise awareness about people with autism spectrum disorder throughout the world. But autism is a new brain damage condition that exists in people at childbirth, resulting in them to encounter difficulty in speech and behavioral patterns different from the normal child or human being. Well, they are often referred to in our local parlance as aflahum, believing that their condition is caused by demonic spirits uh, or occultism, where they are rejected, denied of every right and deprived of freedom to associate. Well, Howard Barry has been looking at this disease in Sierra Leone. She now reports. It's past 10 a.m. and these kids have started their daily routine in this special school. This is the first ever school in Sierra Leone where they cater for autistic children. The idea was born when Mary Penn Timothy came from the UK to settle in Sierra Leone, but could not get a school that caters for children with specific needs. Come to Sierra Leone a few years back with my eldest child and struggled to get a school for her. So no school really accepted her and realizing there was no facility that was easy to meet her and um, of course as a parent you feel down. So I went back to England um, and then just several years later I came back again with her obviously the whole time knowing that there was the need for this. Children like these are either locked up in homes where families or neighbors are unaware they exist or are left to roam in the streets. This is because of the stigma attached to them. <laughs> Autism is a new brain damage condition that exists in people at childbirth, resulting in them encountering difficulty in speech and behavioral patterns different from the normal child or human being. They are often referred to in our local parlance as aflaung, believing that their condition is caused by demonic spirits or occultism. Autism is a condition that is characterized by 
um, social interaction, mm -hmm. inability to interact well with your environment or your fellow men, mm -hmm. and um, it has this repetitive, repetitive kind of behavior, and um, also inability to speak well. Mm -hmm. Some of them can completely lose their speech. Mm -hmm. Some of them can only blab some few words. Mm -hmm. These are the three main things we look at for us to say this child is autistic, coupled with other factors or other things that might, information that we might get from the mother. Alice Brown, a co-founder of the school, is well experienced in dealing with autistic children. Alice thinks constant engagement with the kids and their parents will help reduce the stigma associated with them. Having a child with a disability is difficult. Um, I don't think anyone prays and asks God for a child, give me a child um, with disability. But obviously God has his own reason for giving each individual the type of child that they have. So for a lot of parents, of course, it's very difficult to accept. Whereas you may have some that may accept it sooner, and it may have some that may be in denial as well. Um, so again, that all of that encompasses on uh, that parent support, where you have parents that may have they have kids here, and then you have parents that just come, but they're coming for a reason as well. So try to get them to that point where they will be able to accept that okay, this is what's happening with my child. The school is currently run by these two ladies who use their own finances in supporting the school together with other donors who support them in other ways. The Disability Commission is supposed to cater for children with autism. According to the Executive Secretary of the Commission, their mandate is so broad that they deal with pressing issues. The mandate is so broad that uh, we have to look after not just autistic children but for the entire people with disabilities in the country and then we have meager resources to do that. So we have to prioritize and also look at the immediate needs given the, 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 the urgency of the need. Because of lack of funds, these young people are volunteers who have decided to dedicate their time helping these children with training from a partner school abroad. Sierra Leone has not conducted any research to indicate reasons or causes of autism. However, the doctor seems to know some of the causes of autism in Sierra Leone. From my experience, um, talking to some of the, the parents that came, like when we went to McKinney, a lot of them had stories of being three or four days in labor. Um, some of them had stories of my child had multiple convulsions when, when he was younger. My child was admitted for meningitis maybe an untreated meningitis or a severe case where the brain got damaged. So those can be uh, in Sierra Leone. Some of our factors that we can look at, trauma can also be maybe the child fell when the child was younger and had a very hard hit on the head or something like that. The Brown Penn Sped School really lays more emphasis on visual learning for these children because almost all of them can't express themselves. Kojo Kwafo is a trained caregiver for autistic children and worked in a home with autistic children for three years. They, as I said, they are human beings themselves and they have rights and we have to protect their rights, you know, and they have to be cared for because in Sierra Leone they call them uh, fufu or, you know, a flower and stuff like that, you know, but uh, that's not the way it's supposed to be. You know, you see, these kids, if, if anything happens to them, whilst they are under your care, you'll be taken to court and there are penalties for it. <laughs> if something as, as, mo as small as a, as a scratch on their skin, because they have doctors who come in to examine them, something as small as a scratch on the skin, you're in big trouble. You know? So that's why um, they also put people to, through training. Before you go and work with children with autism, you have to go through, through training. They have the control and restraint course and uh, negotiation skills course which helps you to be able to talk to them because they could be very difficult to, to work with and very challenging to work with. So you have to have the required skills to be able to communicate with them. Some of the parents of these children do not want to be identified 
because of fear of stigma and provocation by community members. That is why some of the faces of these children are hidden. Some people don't see the need of enrolling them into a school. Disability issues in any part of the world is not easy. No parent carer wants to be caring for 24 hours a day or a good deal of their day for maybe a child of 16 that should be doing a lot for themselves. But actually it happens to some of us and what do you do? But actually what we've seen in other parts of the world is when you put the right interventions, the right strategies to, to kids with cognitive issues, in fact any kid, any child with special needs, when you use the right approach, you will see that that child, even if it's not academically, but the self-help skills, that child will gain something from that. Because as you rightly said, we will get old as parents, as carers, but you want the child to be able to do some things for themselves. So when you're not around, that child at least will have some independence. For this type of illness, Major Dr. Rogers thinks early detection can help improve the ability of the child. So if this child, you notice at age one year, certain things he's not doing properly, he's not doing it compared to the same one year old, I mean another child of the same age, then you show some concern, come to the hospital. It's because if we catch them as young as that and we start developing, we start helping them, like I told you, we have different departments that helps the physiotherapist, the speech, speech therapist. Um, 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 the physio is for the for, for some of them that cannot walk. Yes, the physio and the speech. We have speech therapists that will come in and help them. There are a lot of other areas people can come in and help them. And gradually, you can see improvement. The school can only make do with these basic facilities for now because they lack space and are being housed for a while in this building in the east which makes it challenging for more children to be enrolled in this school. Reporting for SLBC, Hawabai. Well, thanks to Hawabai who compiled that report. Well, let's come back to the studio. We have John Koma, who is the executive director of um, Stop It Sierra Leone. Well, his organization is working um, to see how they could raise awareness on autism. Welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. Do we have statistics of people suffering from this disease in Sierra Leone? Um, there is no official statistics of autistic people in Sierra Leone. But what do exist is that um, since we are working with pediatricians in hospitals, health centers, they are able to give us reports of children being brought to hospitals uh, parents complaining to them about certain conditions that are related to the signs and symptoms of autism. And we do relate these conditions to autism. Out of that, we can able to give uh, numbers as we get this information. For example, in about two, three, four, five health centers that we have been working with, some parents will say for the day or for the week, about 15 children that have been brought here, the parents complain of various things, and among these things, among those 15 children, seven of them relate the same conditions that they complain. That's are autism related? Yes. You That's understand? almost 50 50, 50, 50 percent. Yeah, so when you take a look at all of this, you should be able to relate the number. But actually, there is no official statistics of autistic people in the country because there is no national survey being done yet. Okay. I mean, when, when, when does a parent start to realize that his or her child has autism? A child normally starts learning at the age of six months. Some children don't even reach at six, they start to talk. But when a child has difficulty in speech at the age of six months, he or she couldn't talk. So talk about your baboon. Well, baboon, whatever. But there is a way children start to talk. Whatever, whether it's rubbish or sense, there is a way they start, actually. When you see your child does not do that, uh, you see the child is just too shy from looking at people, even from looking at you as a parent, or you see a child not concentrating on other things, just being close to himself or herself, you don't even look at somebody in the face, you or she would prefer looking up the sky 
or looking at something just funny or just being conservative to himself or herself, playing with something very funny without even consenting a little, you start to wonder. And by the time that child goes up to eight months and one year, still he or she cannot talk, you start to wonder. And then the features, the physical features of his hands, his body size, everything, they start to change. You still start to wonder. At, at, at that initial stage, when let's say a six month old or an eight month old baby starts exhibiting some of these signs and symptoms you yeah. just explained, is there a way that things can turn around? Of course, yes. Autistic people can improve a lot. They can improve a lot. When the conditions, the enabling environment is there for them to be concentrated on. For example, in Nigeria, we are doing a story about the growth of autism awareness in Nigeria and how the authorities in that country put in the situations in place to make sure that these people actually get concentration. They have what they call therapeutic health centers. These are specialized places they build across the country where they concentrate those people. And you bring in experts trained in special needs education, in special needs therapy, to bring back the memories of those people with certain things they need to relate themselves with. And by that way, people improve from those centers, come back to the homes, some people start working. So it is a fact that autistic people can work. It's a fact that they can improve. It's not a question that is permanent. It can improve. I mean, one, 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 of, one of the most difficult things about autism, the scientists are yet to pinpoint the real cause or the causes. Mm -hmm. Everybody is just, I mean, I'm sure researches are still ongoing. Of course, yeah, there are researches ongoing, but conditions have been placed in two or three ways. It may have some genetic relationship, just like sickle cell. Have you something? Yeah, just like sickle cell. For example, if a family exists for about two, three decades, somebody has autism there, okay, and passes away, after some time, there can be a reproduction of that same condition with somebody in the same family line. It can happen, okay? Beside the biological uh, uh, aspect of when a child is being born and there is some deficiency within the brain during the childbirth process, and then that can affect him or her at old age. But honestly, genetic uh, uh, relationship do has caused it. What about, what, what about what a pregnant woman does, what a pregnant woman consumes, and what he or she drinks, what he or she eats? Does that have any effect? No, 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 no. No, it has no effect to autism. It has no effect to autism. What we initially know about is that during the delivery process, you know, it's, um, it's a very technical situation. Things do occur sometimes. And there can be a damaged condition resulting in the child's brain. When that happens, the person can result to autism. Okay? So it's not that, uh, as you explained, things have to be in that before somebody becomes autistic. No. Okay. Well, continue to be with us. He is uh, John Kuma, the executive director of Stop It Sell. Well, uh, my colleague Esther Mai will leave me shortly for But before you go, um, Esther Mai, uh, what are the penalties that FC Calon is bound to suffer as a result of what happened at the National Stadium on Sunday? Well, um, what they are going to face the music. Well, we can't tell for now because when you look at the precedent that has been set by the board, uh, many a times, like the incident that happened in Kono, in Bo, in Kenema, it was because the fans invaded the pitch and the match was put on hold and in fact, officials were attacked. But in this case, no official was attacked, nothing like that happened, it's just that it's because of the overcrowding. So we don't know whether an emergency committee that was set by the board will take any um, action against FC Cologne because they are the, the, the decisions that have been taken all borders around supporters attacking referees and invading the page thereby um, bringing the game to a halt. But in this case, nothing like that happened. It's just that there was overcrowding. Okay. So we uh, can okay. tell where Esther, my, Esther, finally, how, how do you describe the, the, the Premier League so far, the performances by the, the, the players? and also the way the league has been managed, is being organized as someone who has been covering football for some time now. This is a step in the right direction. For over years now, we've not been seeing football played in the elite league in the country. And now, this particular competition, if Sierra Leone happens to be the, the suspension that FIFA has 
um, instituted in Sierra Leone happens to be lifted, it will be good for our nation. Now we've seen, we've spot out young talent. Like for instance, <coughs> the top goal scorer now, Bimba Sisse, this is the first time for him to play in the Sierra Leone Premier League. He's now on the limelight. Yes, and he has scored um, seven goals. So if it happened that um, the Oster will be playing, there is no need for SLF to be going out for so many professionals to come on board because we've started seeing sporting out young talent and young winning. So I think these are all good things and it serves as job opportunities for many people, the officials, the players and even the market women. Thank you very much. Thank you. She is um, Esther Marie Samuel, our sports producer. Well, the program is a podium coming to you from Freetown. We are going for a short break after the break. The program continues. Well, we are back with the program podium, which is coming to you from free time with me as me. Now, um, Dr. Chaconte, how is life on campus at the moment now? I miss the fire accident. No, well, uh, it, it must be stressful, but I think they are trying to cope. I told you that they are using a makeshift uh, building that is there temporarily, and everybody just crowded up in one uh, uh, room. That is not very really ideal for uh, academic work, and many lecturers have lost. Uh, uh, yeah, teaching materials, they've lost dissertations, and they've lost a number of things. But they are working on that, and uh, the, the positive thing is that you know when this incident happened, lecturers, students, everybody came together and tried to put out the fire, and everybody understands the situation. I think what is critical is the lessons we can learn from this going forward. And I think uh, when you read the report from the incident, I mean the roads. Were not very clear. There were no fire extinguishers. There were, of course, none of the buildings was insured. Uh, there are a number of issues that we can learn from this going forward, and I think uh, government, working with the administration, and even with us as interested parties, would see what we can do to ensure that all those issues are addressed going forward. I mean, apart from that, what else is the alumni embarking on uh, when it comes to? helping the Angela University, because many times, um, years gone by, hardly a semester passes by without one hearing about um, sit-down strike by lecturers, and sometimes you ask yourself whether the alumni had engaged the lecturers themselves. Jala has had his own fair share of issues over the years, and the Alumni Association has over the years consistently engaged all parties, including government, with the bit of trying to resolve amicably these uh, differences. We are focused more on the root causes of some of these problems and uh, uh, one of the issues we identified was lack of basic furniture on the, uh, on, on the campus and so as an alumni association we mounted a fundraising campaign and we were able to procure again in collaboration with the administration 950 sets of desks and chairs. That helped to ameliorate the situation and right now we are also working with the administration to procure an additional 4,000 sets of desks and chairs for the university. That is part of what we are doing. We have also launched four other projects. We have launched uh, a laboratory project. We have done our assessment and found out that the laboratory institution is not the best. That's what needs to be done about that. We have received an estimate of what needs to be done and we are mobilizing resources to try and uh, see what we can do to work with the university to do something about it. We are also working on 
fundraising effort for the hospital, which also needs our support. We are also set up an endowment fund. This endowment fund, you know, we want to believe that it is not always good to be addressing issues on an ad hoc basis, with this fire brigade approach to development. We don't believe in that, so we hope that once we're able to set up the endowment fund eventually, then whenever crises like these come up, we are able to then uh, respond more quickly. We are also uh, working on the designs and working on the commission of the road to do a proper gate. You know, most universities, when you enter the university, you know that you are entering the university. The entrance is very critical. There is a, a fifth project, which is the bust of the first principle. That, that project is championed by my predecessor, uh, uh, Mr. Samusi Dean, and supported by Professor Malam Usman Esan Boko, Ronald Malam O, and a few others. We're trying to see how we can remember and recognize the first principle. So we are working closely with the administration to address issues where they arise, and we believe that we have a responsibility to respond to every uh, problem that comes up, and we hope that together we can help make Jamaica University one more. I, I know you have um, alumni who are out of the country, and how have you managed to reach them when it comes to this particular intervention that the association is embarking on? Well, we, 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 we have a website. And uh, we have a database, and uh, alumni have registered there. But over and beyond that, we also have set up various WhatsApp groups. We have WhatsApp groups for each region the north, the south, the west, and the east. And we also have two general uh, WhatsApp folders. So we share all information in this folder, and from time to time, we add on uh, new alumni. Into What's your membership? I mean, alumni. Uh, I cannot give a definite figure now, but uh, it's increasing by the day, and uh, it's an ongoing process. But we are, we are reaching out to alumni on a, on a daily basis. No, but those, those, those you have in your register at the moment. That oh, we have, we have over a thousand now. You have over, over a thousand. Over if a you thousand. can reach each of those members, if even if one of them were to give, let's say, around 20,000 euros, if you work that mathematics, that I'm sure well, well, that is, the money that, that you're that, asking. That, yeah, that, that is what we have been, uh, I just told you that in less than two weeks, of fundraising, we've raised over 50 million already, and it's and county. And uh, we have asked each of the chapters to mobilize resources and provide for the association. And on Saturday, we'll be launching formally the northern chapter of the Alumni Association, and we hope that very soon we'll be launching the other chapters in the other regions. You know, it's an ongoing process. Interestingly, we've discovered that. People are more interested in their secondary schools that they attended than their <laughs> universities. I'm sure even Furabe is facing similar problems. But we are not giving up. We are continuing to push, and we hope that eventually we'll be able to garner enough interest and enough support from alumni. If the alumni are really committed and they want to do it, raising 700 million is not a big deal, I believe. Uh, like you said, we don't we, a, a thousand alumni. Those who can afford it, if they each give a thousand dollars, don't take long. We'll, 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 we'll raise a lot of money. So, but we, we believe it's gradual. We we have some alumni who have donated a thousand dollars to this so process. Some five hundred dollars, some two million, some one million. But the lowest so far is a million people have donated to this uh, particular project. And we believe it's increasing. So we want to also encourage those who cannot. Uh, contribute one million. Come with your hundred thousand. Come with your two hundred thousand. Come with your fifty thousand. Whatever you have, 